Hey, y'all. It's Maddie. And this is Bleaves, and we're here to talk about the Chicago Bears. Ah, <sighs> we didn't do a post game wrap up. What a week it's been. How are you doing? It feels like everybody just got back from like surgery or something. Like this is just one of those weeks where nothing quite feels good about the Chicago Bears. What do you think? I don't know. I I just think after that loss and just how embarrassing it was, it was kind of like a downward spiral for the whole organization. Monday mm -hmm. wasn't good. And, you know, I thought it started off really weird when they right away announced Justin Fields was out. And they announced that what? Right after the game or early Monday morning. And then yeah. I thought it was weird. The vibe, the whole mood was set for the week when Jalen Johnson requested a trade. Uh, that was really eye-opening to me and really concerning and i think everybody the whole fan base is like starting to kind of realize it and then you know the coach getting fired jalen johnson not being traded us picking up montez sweat but giving up a second round draft pick the list kind of just goes on and i don't know about you but like i'm not really looking forward to sunday <laughs> i don't know i saw it i mean same way like you know it started off Thank first you. play was a 41 yard bomb oh that yeah, a beautiful pass Right. Felt felt like, okay, at least there's a good start to everything. And then it went downhill from there. And it's really, I, I you know, we talked about the week before. It's the defense has got to stop people. And if the defense doesn't stop people, then we're in trouble. So then yeah. we get to, you know, uh, when, once you're behind, you've got a problem. But as the, the game plan unfolded, uh, what worked the week before was, the short passing game. Mm -hmm. So what did we do? Uh, Luke Getze and all his brilliant wisdom decided we should do. We should go downfield because this is a much better defense than we were dealing with before. Yeah. They're going to rush the quarterback a little bit, a little bit better. So what we should do is cripple our quarterback and make him have to throw downfield. There's a, it felt like to me a bad call. Then yeah. the defense got us behind because they weren't stopping. And look, in, in fairness to Justin Herbert, he's a great quarterback. He was making the plays, and we were not making the plays. Uh, Jalen Johnson, who wants $21 million, uh, was getting dragged across yeah. the field and okay. exposed and embarrassed. And, and then the game was over in a, in a dominating fashion. And then immediately we get told, number one, Tyson Bajant is going to start next week. Number two, Jalen Johnson wants out. And then uh, we sign Montez Sweat. And then I think today we announced that we had signed defensive end Anthony Stallings to a long-term contract. So that's actually a good deal. It's a good deal. It's a mixed bag. Uh, you know, you keep Jalen Johnson, good. You, you got Anthony Stallings signed to a long-term deal, good. You got Montez Sweat now. You're trying to negotiate with him for a long-term deal, good. Tyson Bajan, I think really what we did see, by, by the way, was I think we saw his upside. I think we really, you know, we got that cold, hard stare right there. For anybody who thought that Tyson Bajan was going to be the future of the Bears, I think they got cold water poured on them. There's a reason that a Division II quarterback is a Division II quarterback. Yeah. I mean, he did get a little exposed, but... The game plan just was so bad. How much can you put a blame on him? You know, I mean, he's a rookie quarterback who's never been in this type of situation. Maybe we can argue that he shouldn't be ever. But um, I don't know. Like, it's just like why I, I still am questioning, like, why did we change our defensive game plan, our offensive game plan? Like, what what are they doing to prepare? It's just I don't know. it's mind boggling. I think we went, uh, you know, we played well as man to man, and then we went zone for some reason. Yeah, why? Um, like, I I don't get it. Our coverage is just not good. We made Justin Herbert look like <laughs> prime time Aaron Rodgers. I thought, like, he is. Just let's be fair. There are times when Justin Herbert looks like that, even without a a, de a struggling defense. True. Um, you know, he, he I, I, credit to him. He is. Yeah, he he is great. I just. I when he was what on a he was eleven for eleven I think to start the game, I mean oh it's just it it makes me mad. <laughs> should be infuriating if you're a fan of the Chicago Bears you should be absolutely infuriated with many of the things that you're seeing and and look you were you were talking about this um, 
this coach being let go. What was his name? David something or other? Oh, David Walker, I think. David, David Wal Walker, yes. Yeah. He gets let he gets let go. And Ryan Poles comes up to the mic. Ryan Poles yeah. says, We have every confidence in this coaching staff and Matt Eberflus. And here's the question that I have to ask. We fired our defensive coordinator for inappropriate behavior second game into the season. We just fired our running back coach seven games into the season, eight games into the season. And we're giving out, we're giving a vote of confidence to Matt Eberflus. But I have to ask you a question, Maddie. Who hired these two coaches? Isn't it Poles? No, it's Matt Eberflus. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, the two that got fired. Yeah. Yeah. The guy I, that we're giving the vote of confidence to for whatever reason we're doing it right now. We're giving him a vote of confidence, and he's the guy who's hiring the problems. No, I just I can't handle Matt Eberfus anymore. Like I, I generally cannot stand him. Like he's just sounds stupid. And I don't want to talk about my White Sox, but it goes back to my White Sox and like I, I tweeted something and people were like, uh, what do you expect him to say? Like, cause polls had commented about, um, I have full confidence in this coaching staff. Yeah. And I said, oh, you got to get rid of polls too, because you, you know what really made me mad? I wake up to an, to a, a Fox news thing that the Raiders fired their head coach. Why can't we do that? Like, I just don't get it. What is the stigma with the Bears organizations that they cannot let go of a coach in the middle of the season? Clearly, Poles, in my opinion, clearly Poles thinks maybe we could flip the switch because he signs, you know, Montez Sweat. Jalen Johnson isn't traded, so you're keeping a young, healthy cornerback. Uh, and then we extend our defensive end. What do you think this season is? Because if you don't sign Montez Sweat, you just gave up a second-round draft pick. Yeah. It just blows my mind. I'm so mad. I was like, the Raiders are just as bad as us, and they can get the job done. And we're going to have to go how many more games now? So I'm going to go back to um, the, the cooler head is going to prevail. I told you <laughs> that they would get better as the season goes. In two of the last three games, four, uh, two of the last four games, We've seen the best performances. We've seen their two victories. We've seen the team get close to it. They should be three and one. They, they should be three and one in the last four games. So mm -hmm. they are still improving. But what we're trying to do at this point, I think, and this is just my opinion, is we're trying to litigate every single loss. And mm -hmm. sometimes you just, you just get blown out. Do you remember a couple of years ago, when the Patriots came to town and the Bears ended up winning, no business winning. Yeah. Um, sometimes you just have that team's number. And I think Justin Herbert just had the number. And the the Bears are still struggling a little bit to find an identity. And okay, that's a fair argument, I believe. What if what we were doing right there was so and I'm going to play devil's advocate. What if we were coaching to build the offensive line, make the offensive line pass protect a little bit better, and we were basically throwing away a game, not knowing whether we would win the game or not, but thinking that maybe we could do a decent job. This is the logic. But what if we could do a decent job with this offensive line, get it a little bit better, and our savior is going to be back in a week or two? So... You know, we're just trying to improve that line and get it better. And if you remember, we did have Braxton Jones until we didn't. So yeah. the line could have, you know, I think maybe we were anticipating something better. And then we just had to go out and perform. And then before you, sometimes you just get shocked in a game. So, sometimes you just get shocked. And before uh, before you ha you even know it, you're, you're down and you're struggling and you don't have an answer. And you've already got a game plan in place. You've already been working on something for a week. And now how do you make a correction on the fly? And even if these are talented athletes, making a correction like that on the fly when you didn't plan for it, that is a coaching problem. But yeah. it's still an isolated sort of problem. They still had to go out and they had to play the game. And they played uh, a poorly managed game that I think that – you know, a little more talent, a little more time, a little more Justin Fields. 
and you are able to maybe mask a lot of the flaws. And in the second half, I think this team is going to start pulling out some victories that are, are just, you know, that, that you don't think they're going to have. I think this is going to be a better team when Justin Fields returns. So, you know, one more game at least. And we'll see. I really hope you're predicting the future because, like, I texted you this. I just feel like a lot of people are checked out a little bit already. And, yeah. you know, I mean, it doesn't help what we're two and six, I think, now. Two and six. Yeah, two yeah. and six. So we're kind of at that point where it's like last year, you know, like who was really watching? And, you know, most people are still going to watch, but like the engagement isn't going to be there. The hope isn't going to be there. You know, I think after the Vikings game and then after our victory with uh, Tyson, I think people were like, oh, okay, you know, let's do this. And then, and then this loss comes and then another coach gets fired and it's just like the domino effect, you know, the Saints, I don't even know what their record is, but I think they're also two and six. So like the, just what frustrates me too is like, all these games are so winnable and so beatable. Like nobody in this league, except maybe the Kansas City Chiefs, Eagles, you know, Niners, those three powerhouses. Other four than four. that, though, okay. So I mean, they're not doing bad. But other no. than that, like these. They did Jameis Winston too. Oh wow! Wow. Oh. Pretty sure he's headed to uh, Minnesota. I want to say. It, and okay, you know what? I, I prayers to Kirk Cousins even more. Whatever. But the the end of North is, it's just so winnable, you know. It really like I don't want to say it like it sounds stupid, but in a way, it really is so winnable this year. No more Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins is out. The Detroit Lions, like, are they really, really good? You know, but no, exactly. Yeah, I knew you weren't gonna think they were very good, but um. So that's what like this second half, you know. If we go in Sunday and win, maybe we'll grasp hope again. But they got to really string together a few wins in a row for people to still buy in, I think. But here's the thing. We're going to run the ball, and we're going to do a good job of running the ball. True. We're going to refocus on running the ball. We got one more week, maybe, of Tyson Bajan. And, I, again, mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with him. I still think he's a uh, yeah, I don't substitute. Either. He had a bad game. He made a couple of bad throws. But he made rookie mistakes that rookies make. And again, mm-hmm. exacerbated by the circumstances. So I think that we're going to come in. I think we're going to have a great game against uh, New Orleans, which is a team uh, also in a little bit of disarray. So I think that we're going to come in. We're going to have a, another. We're going to have a nice game. We're going to look. Everybody has pride. So I think the defense really didn't step up, and I think they 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 feel that. I think they mm-hmm. feel that. They see now that the in this week. You just saw a commitment, Ryan Poles, to his players in letting Jalen Johnson go shop your wares and do your thing. Let me know if it's best for you. I will take care of you. And it was not. So now he has to work on a deal or he just has to have it let expire. Uh, but then in the meantime, uh, Montez Sweat comes in. And now we're trying to lock him into a long-term deal. Anthony Stalling is locked into a long-term deal. Now they're starting to make moves and they're starting to make plays. Who's going to be on this team? And are you going to play for that Chicago Bears jersey? And I think that that's going to, I think Montez coming aboard may not be the the ultimate rallying cry this week, but it's a rallying cry for this team. So I feel like what's going to happen is they're going to come in, they're going to start playing hard, going to have some success. And then the next thing you know, uh, that success is going to permeate to the rest of the team. And then the offense will get on. Uh, a little bit of a run the the offense will start to just punish um, that line. And then there we are. And we, and we have to remember, even if the chargers were not that good, a team, Justin Herbert is an all world quarterback and they do have a lot of big time yeah. athletes. They've got Bosa, they've got Khalil Mack. They've, yeah. got, they've got a, a fantastic team that just is underperforming right now. And, you know, we got caught flat footed and before you know it, you're playing from behind the eight ball, and that's not what the Bears do. Yeah, the Bears yes. pound it, and they didn't do it. So, uh, did you see that Darnell Wright was like ranked the highest rookie? Um, I, I don't know if it was like by position or whatever, but he was ranked the highest rookie, and he he has been. I feel mm-hmm. I I think like he kind of goes under the radar, you know, because the offense isn't the best. But he played really well against Khalil Mack and Bosa. Yep. Like that's that's promising. I feel. 
I have to ask you this. You know I don't like Bozo the Clown. Do you think, because he's a defensive-minded coach, like I was reading and stuff like that. So do you think this is Ryan Pohl's way of saying that, like, he's going to be staying next year? Like, what do you think about that? I think it's your responsibility to have the back of your friend until you don't have the back of your friend. When you're in the heat of battle, and this is the battle this season, you are supposed to have your friends back no matter what. Now, if you're not the friend who has your friends back, if you're not that guy, if you're not, uh, and this comes back to some people are just raised a certain way. You, you have your friends back until it's time for you and your friend to separate. And for the Bears, that's the end of the season. So he has his back until then. He will defend him until then, even in the indefensible moments, which is what we feel. So yeah. I think it's admirable that Ryan Poles knows the circumstances knows what he can and cannot do and that he is standing up for and taking the bullets for Matt Eberflus when we know that those bullets better be directed towards him and that, that big red hair and the big floppy shoes and the, and the blue outfit that he wears and those five <laughs> cans that he keeps having people throw the balls <laughs> into, you know, we, we, we get to know, right. so, but he's got back, he's, he's got his back. And I think that, that no matter what anybody else says, is an admirable quality for Ryan Poles. And I do like the way that he's building this team. There are mistakes so that he's going to make. Like, I, I like Poles. I want to generally like him. Like, And I think he makes some solid moves. I think he can be a little cheap, but that's all Chicago sports, let's be honest. But I think he has a really good business mind, and he, like, wants to get this job done. You know, he has yeah. a winning mentality. He has a, let me get this, let's do it, you know? I just wonder if Matt Eberflus matches that energy. So we came out of drafting Mitchell Trubisky and giving up the farm for him. And now we're seeing somebody doing the opposite. They're, they're making deals, making plays, bringing in young talent, good, solid young talent. Maybe, maybe this will be misdirect in the coaching staff. Maybe, maybe Matt Eberflus is just not that guy. Or maybe... Again, this team has to develop, and there are plenty of, by the way, there, there are plenty of people who are out here giving sage advice that are telling you that this could be better, this could be better, this could be better. Like, for example, Dave Wanstead, Dave won 500 coach in his entire career. Dave Wanstead got yeah. fired for lack of performance with the Chicago Bears. I love Dave Wanstead, but we do have to realize that some, you know, coaches don't start out very well, and, you know, this team had a lot going against it when he came aboard, continues to have a lot. Some of the wounds are self-inflicted. Look, you, you hire some Luke Getze and Luke Getze, I think doesn't get it. I, I don't think that he <laughs> planned very well. I don't think he's, he's the best. He was the best hire, but what if you take him out of the mix at the end of this year and say, look, you just didn't get it done. And you bring in somebody who does, because you, yeah. again, you can't do it. Matt Eberflus doing the same thing that Ryan Pace is doing and that he's covering, he's got his guys back. So you get to the end of the year, and now you replace him with a, a good line. And you know you got to start again, but you don't really have to start from zero. So you, you bring in somebody who's got some talent, who knows and understands the NFL offense of today, that starts to implement right away. You get yourself ready for the next season. And what if your defense is, you know, five ranking points better? Just, just yeah. a little bit better. What if the offense is one touchdown a game better. What kind of team do you have right there? You have a Super Bowl contender. Like that's how silly, you know, that's 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 how when they say we're close or when they say, you know, I can feel it like we're not that far away, we look at all of the I said it before. We're we're litigating the history. We're we're litigating Maggie. We're we're litigating uh Mark Tressman. We're litigating yeah. Jay Cutler and his cigarettes during the game. We're <laughs> litigating Mitchell Trubisky not making the throws. We're litigating all of these different things in everything that we're mad at Matt Eberflus. Yeah. Over. And I think we're all just sick of the losing. Right. You know, and so we're looking for a reason to fuck. We're looking everything. we're always looking for like someone to blame. That happens to any organization, any fan base. But I just think like the fans are just they're just tired. And, you know, I still have all my faith in Justin Fields, but I think it really goes back to a lot to the quarterback position. 
and you know looking at the years of the court uh the chargers they showed like uh did you see that like they showed like an image of like the quarterbacks between like 2000 like uh six i think to now i i don't remember what it was the bears had like 30 quarterbacks yeah, and yeah. the chargers had i think four justin herbert um oh my the god guy on the, the lions i think what's his name no that's uh aaron goff or jared goff oh he was where was he i can't remember the rams maybe no yeah he was at the, yeah he was at the rams oh my god the big um i you know what now it escapes me all of a sudden but I, I think maybe they did have two maybe three because you know i think going back to 2000 you probably go back to they had the number one pick um let's do this chargers what was his name QB. it was a big it was a big name guy. It was ryan something ryan Tannehill? no that's not it who was before herbert i don't know because he got um i can't remember ryan leaf oh phil rivers there we go phil Okay, there we go. So you had Phil Rivers, you had Drew Brees, and you had Ryan Leaf. Those are the ones yeah. that they've had since 2000. And, and Justin Herbert. So four quarterbacks. Us, yeah. we have – you could build a whole roster. <laughs> you could literally build a whole – I was like, that's embarrassing. But then you come to – like, as a fan, you're always in the back of your mind. And you're like, can you trust this quarterback? Like, you know, with baseball, you put your best pitcher on the mound. One out of five, whatever. In football, you can blame the defense all you want. Look at the 2018 team. We had the best defense in the league almost. Like, let's be honest, nobody was scoring. None of us tr trusted Mitch Trubisky. And he's, he, okay, he I got did. the, oh, you were a Mitch fan? I, hey, in 2018, I was a Mitch fan. After that, no, <laughs> he had to go. I, I, was a, I was a Watson fan. I was hurt I, yeah. by the fact that they took Mitchell Trubisky. But I was willing to give him a chance because, you know, he had he only had a year, and I, I thought maybe they overdrafted. I thought maybe they saw something that other people were not seeing. Uh, and by the way, Patrick Mahomes was not, you know, yeah, Patrick no one, Mahomes no one knew that was going to be that right. Way. But but Deshaun Watson, uh, I I was a big time Deshaun Watson mark, so I was upset by the fact that they didn't choose him. But I was willing to give Mitchell Trubisky a chance, and I liked a lot of what I saw. He was a fiery player. He was a rookie. Yeah. He wasn't a leader, but he was a fiery player, and he wanted to be a leader. And, and, and he wanted to win, too. Like, yes. I really thought he, like, had that winning mentality. But it just – it's like just fans. You go out – like, I think a lot of people like Justin Fields because he's Justin Fields. You know, and Ohio State, you know, I, I don't like Ohio State, but whatever. Like, everybody – he's from the Midwest. Everybody was like, let's buy into it. And – something like we're just missing one little piece i feel one little piece and this team could skyrocket it just sucks that like us fans like we don't have a quarterback that like we just don't have an aaron Rodgers, and we haven't seen that in years you know and i don't want to give aaron Rodgers credit but it's just it, like it gets tiring and exhausting that you know we don't have anybody on this team in years that's going to go out you there and get you a win but here's the thing I I I I I I think that Fields is that guy that will get you win. I I you know I mean dare I say it, uh, Tyson Badgett, Even if he's gonna make mistakes, he's gonna get better. And as a rookie, he's making rookie mistakes, but mm -hmm. he's got that fiery spirit. He's got that leadership True. quality that you're looking for. You know th these guys are you know the 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 leadership play is sorely lacking on the Bears and has not been cultivated yeah. and. You know, going back to, I think Mitchell wanted to be that guy and and was not as that guy and not given a chance. And, and, you know, the offensive line has been a problem for a while. And nobody's had a chance to really develop and, and become that person. And then, you know, the hard part is when you don't have team leadership, not coaching, team leadership, when you don't have Brian Urlacher, when you don't have Lance Briggs, when you don't have Matt Forte, when you don't have these leaders stepping up, calming people down, shutting people up, getting people ready to play yeah. and be successful, when you don't have that, then you have a problem on your team. And we've had a problem on our team for a long time. Yeah, and, but I think it goes back to the culture, too, of the organization. Because my, my thing is, like, you can't establish a culture with, like, uh, like if – you can't build a team without like leadership. 
you know, and again, I'm not going to relate to my White Sox all the time, but I am. Like, their front office is a complete disaster, and I just feel like uh, Ryan Poles came in, and I actually think he's doing a good job. I think people think he he's leading this team, and that's what we've missed in the past. You know, the ownership is so bad and our GMs were just not the best. And now you got Ryan Poles, who's like full on businessman, wants to get the job done. So I think if players really start to trust him, maybe like that will like lead to like individual leadership on the field. But I agree, like there's there's no accountability whatsoever. Not to the and and by accountability, I think the accountability is between teammates. There's no accountability yeah, yeah. between teammates. Yes, um, I agree. And there should be there. There, there somebody's got to stop and take more of a, a a leadership role. I think one of the things that I I did see before we go to the predictions was Lance Briggs commenting a couple weeks ago, and he said, you know, I'm watching the defense work together. I'm watching them in practice. I'm watching everything, and they don't talk to each other. They don't communicate with one another. Mm. They don't do the little things. They don't call what they see. You know, back in the old days the Chicago Bears team would talk nonstop to each other. They would be calling out plays when they were recognizing plays. They would be calling out, you know, what they see developing on the field. They would be talking to each other. And he was like, you know, I watched an entire practice and none of that happened. I watched another practice. None of that happened. I'm watching the game. That's not happening. You know, they've yeah. got to get better at talking to each other and communicating, but somebody's got to be a leadership position for that. So let's uh, hopefully Matt Eberflus is going to be that guy. But in the meantime, now we got to do a prediction. Yeah, Maddie. sorry, I was blabbing. <laughs> what do you think is going to be the final score for the Chicago Bears and the New Orleans Saints? You know, I hate to do this, but you know, I think the I think they're going to come on top, and I think it's going to be twenty-four to ten. What about you? I'm going to go the entire reverse. Not only am I going to go reverse, <laughs> I'm going to say the defense is ready to prove a point because they got embarrassed. I think that they have heart. I think that Tyson Bajan didn't perform the way he wanted to, and that upsets him tremendously. Mm -hmm. I think that Deontay Foreman didn't get the ball enough. I think that all the problems that we recognize, I think they're all feeling them this week. So I think that we see a focused and fired up Bears team. And I think the score is going to be 31 to 10 Chicago. Oh, I hope you are so right. I will have a great week if that's the case. I am praying. <laughs> well, I get that feeling. I, just, I Sometimes you get that feeling. Hopefully yeah. it manifests itself on the field. Because I think that this is a team that will get better as we go. So yep. I think that's it. I think we covered it all. There's plenty of stuff. We probably do this Always. more often. Yeah, we probably should. But Sorry, we until, then, too much. but until and then, you guys have a good day, and we will talk to you again very, very soon. And Bear Down, Chicago Bears.